What's up everyone, Lakonde Mwila here, back with another video, and we're talking K8s. Last time around, I covered the main concepts around Argo CD, how to install it, and how to create a basic source destination setup with an Argo application. In this video, I'm going to cover a more real-world example. I'm going to walk you through a full CI CD pipeline. GitHub is going to be my source. I'm going to use AWS code build and code pipeline to cover the CI stage. And lastly, Argo CD will handle the GitOps continuous delivery. The target destination in this case is an Amazon EKS cluster. Before we get into it, I want us to consider the potential risk of deploying resources with improper or insecure configurations. And that's something that comes into play when you're going with a GitOps strategy. Remember, Argo CD applications watch the source for resources that need to be deployed to your downstream cluster. So it's good to have a mechanism in place to make sure that what you intend to deploy meets a certain criteria. For example, do your deployments have more than one replica configured? Do your containers have liveness and readiness probes? And have you disabled root access for those containers? These are just a few, but the list can get much longer depending on your workload requirements. The tool that I'll be using in this example is Detree. And Detree is going to help me achieve that stability and prevent any misconfigurations based on the criteria that I set in my Detree account. You might be wondering how this is all going to come together, and that's a good point for us to actually switch over to the workflow overview. So, for starters, my pipeline is an AWS and it's going to be triggered when a push is made to the relevant GitHub repository. In the code build stage, my application will be tested, and if it's successful, then the Docker image will be built and pushed to my Docker Hub account with a new image tag based on the version bump that I specify in the application. After that, I'm going to clone the repo with the application Helm charts and update the image version tag in the values file. Once that is done, I'll use the tree to test the Helm chart to make sure the resource configurations meet all the criteria set in my Detree account. Provided that passes, I'll commit and push the changes to the Helm chart Git repo to its upstream location in GitHub. Lastly, as you would expect, Argo CD will detect the changes to the Helm chart Git repo and proceed to deploy them to the target namespace in my destination EKS cluster. If you're wondering about the application that I'm going to be working with, it's going to be a very basic or mock e-commerce application that I like to use. And it's got three parts to it or three components or microservices. And those microservices are a GraphQL server and orders and products. And each one of these is a Node.js based application. So let's take a look at all of this in action. So as you can see, I am signed into my AWS console and I'm currently in the EKS uh, section of things. And I just want to give you a quick lay of the land. As you can see, I have two clusters over here. One is dedicated to Argo and the other is going to be my downstream cluster, which I have named Beta. And um, I've already got Argo up and running. And as you can see over here, I have three applications that I've created, GraphQL orders and products. And each one of them is for the respective microservices that I mentioned I'll be working with. And in my video where I introduce um, Argo CD and talk about the fundamentals and the concepts around things like applications and projects, um, I demonstrated how to create an application using the UI. This time around, I took a different approach. I'm using infrastructure as code, and so I'll actually show you that. Over here in my VS Code editor, I have created three application.yaml files. This obviously simplifies the process because I'm using infrastructure as code this time around instead of going with the UI approach. And this is great because you can store this in a Git repository. And so as you can see in this manifest file, I'm working with the four top level fields as you would typically would, um, API version, kind, metadata, and spec. Um, difference being uh, this time around, your spec in most cases for Kubernetes resources typically consists of the container configuration. Um, in this case, it has the details of the project that the application belongs to, which is e-commerce platform here, and also the source and destination, which are the two fundamental concepts of an application. And so under source is um, my uh, Helm charts Git repository. And under there, specifically, I specify the path for um, the GraphQL application, which is under application charts and GraphQL. Uh, that's where the chart lives for that. And in addition to that, um, this application is specifically for what I'm calling my dev environment. And so I detailed the values-dev file, which is what will actually be controlling um, the ultimately the behavior, because that's what I'll update in terms of the container image tags. 
Also, I've got the destination, and this is the URL for my uh, EKS cluster that I've named beta. And then remember, your destination also has to have um, a namespace specified, which is e-commerce in this case. And I want to have automated uh, syncing for my applications, hence me specifying these properties over here. And I've also set self heal to true. And um, this is a very similar setup to the other applications, products, and orders as well. And so um, no major differences over there. The only thing would obviously be the, the path to make sure I'm pointing to the correct chart for the respective application, but each of them has the same naming format uh, in terms of the values file, values-dev. So now that you've seen that, the next thing that I want to cover is the build spec file inside of the, app, the actual application source code. And this is a very important um, thing to cover because there's a whole lot that goes on inside of here. And I'm just going to open this up so you have an idea of the directory. So this is the GraphQL server, and we've got orders, and we've got products. And each of these is actually a respective, um, an individual um, Git repository inside of my GitHub account, uh, but I'm just opening up them up like this to make it a little bit easier. And I'm just going to demonstrate one of the build spec YAML files because they're all very similar. After I've done that, I will then make changes to the orders and the products and push those changes, which will obviously trigger the pipelines. And it will be a nice way for you to see all of this in action. So for starters, um, this build spec file is a configuration file for uh, code build, and it will essentially tell code build how it should carry out all the CI steps that I want to perform. And so for starters, um, as you can see over here, I've got I've set up my git credential helper, and this will make it easy for code build to be able to integrate um, with GitHub in my particular case. And um, I will show you how I'm importing credentials for that as well. And I've set my shell to be bash. And then under the phases is where we have different things such as install, pre-build, um, and build. And lastly, we have post-build. So under the pre-build section, this is where we typically install uh, all the different dependencies that we need. And so I'm installing Helm, which I'll be making use of. And then for Detree, I'm going to be using the Helm uh, Detree plugin, which is why I'm installing it over here. And um, I'm also configuring um, my Helm Detree plugin with the relevant um, token for my account. And so all that is an environment variable. Uh, the actual value is stored inside of Secrets Manager, but then my code build um, project um, will have that provided to it. And then next I'm installing YQ because that's the tool that I'll be using to um, update my um, YAML configuration files. In this case, it will be the values-dev file when I update that with the image tag. And then importing of the credentials over here, um, this is where I will import my GitHub token so that CodeBuild can be able to successfully authenticate. And so as you can see over here, I am making use of an import source credentials.json file. And so if I open this up, you'll be able to see this file over here. And the default values aren't really useful. So I've got server type, which is correct. And I've got auth type as personal access token, which is also correct. Uh, however, if you look at token, you'll see that that is just um, a string called token, which isn't the actual value. And that's perfectly fine because I'm storing that file inside of um, my Git repository. And so I don't want the token to be visible um, to anyone else. And so what I'm actually doing is in the, CI, in the CI stage, I'm making use of JQ and I'm updating the token value inside of that import um, credentials file with an environment variable GitHub token, which actually contains the value of my GitHub token. Similar to the Detree token, that GitHub token is stored inside of Secrets Manager and is also provided as an environment variable to my code build project. And lastly, as you can see over here, I just run a couple of commands to make sure that it is um, set up and configured as expected. And lastly, I install the Node.js application dependencies. Moving on to the build phase, I start off with running the tests. And so my application um, tests run in this stage. And this is obviously a very important step. And provided that that passes and goes as expected, then I can move on to actually um, building my Docker image. And so the version for my application is inside of my package.json file. So if I use the example of orders over here, you'll notice that I've got 0.1.3. So that value will be stored inside of an environment variable container image tag. 
And um, after that, I will then proceed to build my Docker image using that same tag. And then I'll log into the Docker CLI, I'll log into the Docker CLI um, using my Docker ID and Docker password. These are also environment variables um, stored inside of my uh, code build project and are fetched from Secrets Manager. So once that is done, the next thing is to move on to the rest of the action. And so I push the Docker image, as you can see over here, just running the Docker push command. And now that I've got a new container image um, stored inside of my Docker Hub account, and it's got a new tag, uh, we need to make sure that the Helm charts are going to reflect this change so that Argo CD can deploy the, the, application, uh, ver the new application version. And so uh, what I do next is I cl uh, create a temporary folder, and inside of that temporary folder, I clone the GitHub repository with uh, the micro um, service Helm charts. As you can see, that's what I'm carrying out over here. And then because I'm currently looking at the build spec file for the products application, I CD into um, the same uh, temporary folder where the repo is into the application charts, and as you can see, uh, specifically products. And then using YQ, I update the products deployment image tag with the new um, container image tag for my application. And so this change is made inside the values dash dev dot yaml file. And so YQ is an excellent tool for being able to manipulate your YAML configuration files. And so the values dash dev file has this particular um, property. And so it will update it in there. And so once that is done, uh, the next thing is for me to test my configurations to make sure that um, it meets all the criteria that I have detailed inside of my Detree account. And so um, I run the Helm Detree test, and I'm making sure that I'm uh, setting this up to use the values-dev.yaml file. And uh, once that is done, provided that all the tests pass and my um, Kubernetes resources for my application are meeting the minimum requirements that I've set up, then it will proceed to actually just commit the changes that I made inside of that uh, microservice Helm charts repository and then push those changes to the upstream location. So the next thing that I'm going to do now is just quickly show you um, the orders application. I have made a slight change in here. I've just uh, fiddled with some of the names. Uh, this is dealing with uh, orders for Bruce Wayne, Steve Rogers, Tony Stark, and Natasha Romanov. In addition to that, I made sure to bump the version for the orders API. And then similarly with products, I've switched the product names around. And so this is another change. And I've also done a version bump over here. And this way I can now commit these changes. And when I'm done with that, I will be able to um, push these changes and that will trigger the pipelines. As you can see, my orders pipeline has completed successfully, and I'm sure that products will be done in a short while. In the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to the microservice um, Helm charts repository in GitHub, and I'm just going to refresh that. And as you can see, there's been a change to the orders charts. So let's take a look at that, specifically the values-dev file. And we have a new image tag here, 0.1. 
dot three. And remember, this is the repository that Argo is watching. And so if I head over to Argo, we should see a change in orders very soon. And as you can see, the new version has now been rolled out. And if I go and have a look at products, it should be similar as well, or at least in progress. And you can see over there, this was completed a few seconds ago and a minute ago. We've got new, uh, the new versions running for these respective microservices. Right, so the last thing to cover is to take a look at my application to make sure everything is actually working as expected. And so I have clicked on the GraphQL application in Argo CD, and I wanna get the host name for the particular service. And I've got my host name over here. And this application is listening for traffic on port. 3002 and I have a query set up over here and this is just going to aggregate data for my orders and I want to fetch some order information as well as the products and I'm particularly interested to make sure that I get the relevant names that I specified inside of my um, orders microservice as well as get the new product names so if I hit play and we get the expected results. We can see Bruce Wayne ordered a DSLR camera, Steve Rogers ordered a pair of trainers, Tony Stark ordered Bluetooth headphones, and Natasha Romanoff ordered an Avengers t-shirt. Thanks a lot for watching. If you found that helpful, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more.